following program is a SUTV student production. The views expressed are not necessarily those of Salisbury University, the University System of Maryland, its regents, administration, officers, employees. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be with you at Salisbury University. Why the run? Why did you choose to run for Senate? Well, because I think there's an opportunity to take this great state of Maryland um, and fulfill its complete potential throughout the state. Uh, we're a very diverse state. Um, different parts of the state have different strengths. But I think there's lots we need to do, both as Marylanders and as a country, especially with respect to building an economy that works for everybody. You know, right now people are working too hard uh, without seeing the benefits of that. And we need to change things, increase pay, equal pay for equal work, uh, we need to address a whole range of other issues, a broken tax code that helps people at the top 1% and not hardworking people. Uh, we need to address issues of environmental justice uh, and climate change. And we need to end the scandal of mass incarceration, uh, a system that has uh, treated uh, substance abuse and addiction as a criminal issue, not a health care matter. So those are some of the big issues uh, I'm focused on and making sure we help tailor solutions uh, to different parts of Maryland. Now, why are you the right person for that job as opposed to your chief competitor, uh, Representative Edwards? Well, I think uh, if you look at all these issues and issues that are important to Marylanders, uh, I've been leading the fight on these issues. Um, and it's not enough to identify uh, problems. We can all do that. Uh, but in each case, uh, I put forward specific plans to address them on income inequality long before this campaign began. Uh, I put forward a very comprehensive plan that has been backed strongly by progressives, uh, including people like Bob Reich, uh, who's been leading an effort against uh, Wall Street. Uh, put forward a climate change proposal, and I've been endorsed by the Sierra Club. Uh, put forward uh, legislation uh, with others to address criminal justice reform issues. So I put forward these ideas, and I have a track record of actually getting stuff over the finish line, uh, including uh, one of the first things I did in the House of Representatives, which was to end the huge profits uh, Wall Street interests and big banks were making off the student loan program, and making sure more of that money went back to students. We got a long way to go, uh, as students here on campus uh, know, in terms of making college affordable. Uh, but that was one of the early fights uh, when Wall Street interests were making just outrageous profits. Uh, so these are fights that I've fought, and in many cases won. And continue to put forward specific ideas for how we move uh, Maryland and the country forward. You touched on a number of issues, but let me ask you, if elected, what would be your top priority? Uh, day one, what are you really hitting the ground working on? Well, day one uh, is this whole set of issues around making sure that uh, hardworking Marylanders uh, get the wages that they can use to support a family and then make sure that they have a secure retirement. Uh, right now, you can work full time, all week long, and still be below the federal poverty level. That is a unjust situation. So a lot of the proposals I put forward have been to make sure we increase job opportunities, but also have more shared prosperity. Uh, because right now we have an economy where the top 1% are doing great, and we have a Tea Party Republicans who have policies that just help the folks at the 1%. My focus has been trying to make sure that everybody, first of all, gets a good start in life, which means early education, resources for Head Start, early Head Start, good education, uh, K through 12, opportunity to go to two-year or four-year college, debt-free, uh, and then make sure that there are opportunities out there, job opportunities, that pay a living wage so people can support themselves and their family. How will that fight be easier or different in the Senate when you currently hold the powerful position of the ranking member on, on the Budget Committee? Isn't that almost yeah. of a position that some would see as having more power to influence the economy? Well, what, what, I'm, what I'm hoping is that um, I'll be part of a new Democratic majority in the United States Senate. Uh, and I think we have a very decent chance of doing that. And in the House of Representatives, um, while uh, I, I have a good position uh, and have worked, I think, effectively to advance democratic ideas and priorities on the Budget Committee. The reality is that right now uh, the Republicans are in charge. And it looks, despite all our efforts, like, you know, we're going to work hard to break that. But I think everyone would agree the chances of breaking that are better in the United States Senate. Uh, and the power of the majority in the House is the power to set the 
agenda, right, to decide what to bring up for even a vote or what not. I think there's a real opportunity in the Senate uh, to work with others uh, to actually advance some of these uh, important issues that we've been talking about um, and then at least create more pressure uh, on the House to take them up because once the Senate passes legislation, we can try and rally the country uh, to get the House to take up uh, these measures and vote on it, uh, whether it deals with you know, gun violence or whether it deals with you know, fair pay, whether it deals with immigration reform, whatever it may be, uh, there's more opportunity in the Senate to get that done. And I should also say, um, the Senate provides an opportunity to work with the whole state of Maryland, right? And I do think there are huge opportunities uh, for us to draw even more on our strengths than we have in the past. And I would welcome the chance to be a partner uh, with people in that effort. I want to touch on something else that's happen happening nationally and certainly in Maryland, and that's the, uh, the movement of minority groups mm -hmm. um, and, and the outcry involving uh, issues with law enforcement. Yeah. Um, of course, you saw it uh, in Baltimore after the death of Freddie Gray, and, and we're seeing a new story about it every day. With, with the position in the Senate, you will have a, a larger pulpit. Um, mm -hmm. What would you do from that position to address some of these tensions? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that uh, because I stand with the Black Lives Movement uh, uh, because, you know, for too long, black lives have mattered less in our country because of systemic racism. Uh, and it's important that we address these issues beginning at the at root causes, uh, including huge amounts of disparity uh, and inequality in income and opportunity. Uh, then we deal with the broader issues in the criminal justice system. We talked a little bit about that. And then dealing with uh, accountability uh, with respect to law enforcement. You know, the tragedy of Freddie Gray and the other tragedies we saw around the country just revealed so clearly something that I think people knew but hadn't addressed urgently, which is the systemic uh, issues uh, in law enforcement accountability, uh, which opened a larger uh, frame on the other uh, challenges we face. Look, my, my, my whole public life I fought to try to make sure we make good on the promise of America, which is equal rights, equal justice, and equal opportunity. And we've traveled a, a distance down that path uh, and made some progress, some good progress, but we also have a long journey still ahead to build that more perfect union. And I should say one of the one of the special moments for me as a member of Congress was uh, I got to travel down to Alabama um, on three occasions uh, with John Lewis uh, on a civil rights pilgrimage. Uh, and each time I took one of my three children. Um, and I did that because I thought it was really important that they get at least some sense of the struggle uh, that people in our country have gone through and the sweat and the blood and the tears that have been shed to try to advance our country, um, but also see that people of courage and uh, people who are focused on doing the right thing and on justice can make change uh, in our country. And you know, walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with John Lewis, um, while obviously it wasn't at that moment in time, uh, it did make more real both the challenges that we've faced in this country, uh, the power of courage and moral um, focus to change that, and also the journey still ahead that we need to urgently tackle. Let me ask you about another national issue that you would be addressing if elected, and that's the refugee crisis. Yes. Um, you know the president's plan to accept uh, thousands of refugees is uh, a hot topic of debate in Maryland and across the nation, and it pretty much toes the party line. Mm -hmm. um, where do you stand and how do you uh, balance, you know, letting these refugees in with the, the security risk as we're seeing terrorist attack, attacks across the world, such as what just happened in Brussels? Sure. Well, look, I, I think that the president's policy with respect to refugees um, that have been vetted, as the president has emphasized, uh, you know, people who, um, you know, we take a look at and determine whether or not uh, they've had any, you know, past uh, problems with respect to terrorism or not, um, that that is part of our overall strategy, working with our European allies to address this issue. Because 
Number one, it is my view that we have to go after ISIS and go after them strongly. Now, I'm not in favor of putting American troops on the ground, combat troops. I think that was a big mistake in Iraq. In fact, I think it helped give rise to ISIS. Um, I don't just think that, that's, that's pretty clear. Uh, but I do think we need to do everything we can to support our allies in Iraq and our Kurdish allies to provide military equipment and military support, air support, to go after ISIS, push them back, and ultimately destroy them. At the same time, we've got to do our part in dealing with the refugee crisis in Syria. And that's what the president's been, been talking about. And the reality is that people like Donald Trump, who are trying to pull themselves up by dividing Americans against one another, by this anti-Muslim rhetoric, it's not only wrong and not only sort of undermines what we stand for as a country, which is that people come here to practice their faith and religion freely, it actually hurts our national security interests because we need our allies uh, in the Arab world and the Muslim world who also see ISIS as the threat. We need them with us. And when you have people like Donald Trump uh, essentially trying to smear an entire religion and paint everybody with one brush and taint everybody with the uh, ISIS label, that hurts our national security interests and put Americans at greater risk. So we need to end that rhetoric, we need to do our part. Uh, half of the refugees that have come in have been kids. Uh, and it's important that people recognize that uh, when Europe is doing its part, we need to do our part too. You've mentioned the Tea Party and you've mentioned Donald Trump. If elected and if one of them were elected president, do you think you'd be able to work with them to get things done? <laughs> well, I do not believe Donald Trump will become president uh, and I'm gonna work really hard to prevent that from happening. Finally, I, I want to ask you, you know, early on in the Senate campaign, you, you were well ahead in the polls and things have kind of slipped and Congresswoman Edwards in the most recent poll has a lead. What's caused a slip and how will you change that before November? Before well, November? first of all, I should say, I mean, the, the polling's been all over the place. Um, everything we've seen is that we're continuing to, to build momentum. Uh, we just had some debates, uh, pleased to have recently been endorsed uh, strongly by the Washington Post, uh, as well as by uh, the SEIU, which stands up for workers' rights, and the Sierra Club, uh, United Auto Workers. Um, and by the way, uh, leaders uh, from across the uh, sort of political spectrum within the Democratic Party in Maryland. I was just with Heather Mazur uh, in Chestertown uh, this morning. Of course, the progressive standard bearer uh, for the Democrats in the last gubernatorial election. You know, proud to have uh, the support of the former uh, mayor here, Jim Ireton, as well as the current mayor, Jake Day. So we're, we're building a very strong uh, coalition. Uh, and uh, I think at the end of the day, people are focused on trying to get real results for uh, people in Maryland. And I think one of the distinguishing factors uh, in this campaign is the difference between someone with a record of both getting things done on issues people care about, um, as well as not just identifying problems going forward, but putting forward solutions uh, to address some of the big issues uh, that we've been talking about. Because it's easy to identify a, a problem or a challenge. Um, putting forth specific ideas uh, to deal with it uh, is a whole different matter. And, you know, I'm proud to have the support of the county executive of uh, Congresswoman Edwards' home district in Prince George's County, somebody who's worked with both of us and has said that uh, it's important that you have a partner you can work with in Prince George's County. Uh, that's what Rashern Baker uh, says. So that is, I think, the view of, you know, most people around the state. And um, anyway, I hope to have the chance to work with uh, uh, the people of the state to try and make sure we, we do reach our full potential. This is a great state, um, and we can uh, do even better. Anything else you'd like to add, Congressman? No, I, I, think you, uh, I think you covered it. It's great to be here. Uh, we didn't talk a lot about... Uh, some of the challenges students face with uh, well, student debt, but I would uh, like to address that certain, issue certainly. if I could. If you'd like yeah. to address as many uh, on Salisbury's campus, we just ran into a student who's been here for six years, so yeah. I'm sure she knows the, the trouble of student loan debt and the rising cost of yeah. tuition. What, what would you be able to do in the Senate to address some of those issues? Well, um, it, there are some things we should do right away. Um, one is for people who have already graduated who have these huge debts. Uh, we need to allow them to refinance that at lower rates. Uh, so I'm part of a piece of legislation in the House that Elizabeth Warren has put forward in the Senate that would allow people to 
refinance at uh, lower interest rates. Uh, I actually led the effort years ago to end the outrageous profits the big banks, a lot of Wall Street interests were getting off of the student loan program. So we got, we got rid of that, we got the big banks out of it, uh, but now we need to make sure the government allows refinancing at lower rates. For students who are going through college now, a couple things. Number one, we need to make sure that we uh, put forward uh, you know, the, the funding for Pell Grants. Um, as the lead Democrat on the Budget Committee, I've been working with the President to do exactly that. Uh, I support the free community college a proposal the President's put forward, uh, so long as we also address concerns that HBCUs have had. Uh, and then we need to make sure we create more incentives to, for, for universities to keep their costs a little lower and beef up the income-based repayment plans that are out there. There are a number of plans out there that allow people to repay their debts based on their income. Um, a lot of people don't know about them, and we need to uh, expand them uh, and make them more uniform in how they apply. But we don't want students graduating with these huge debts. It's not good for them, and it's not good for the surrounding community when they can't go out and rent an apartment or put down a mortgage or you know participate um, you know in the in the community. Uh, so big challenge. Um, lots of things we should be doing. Uh, I put forward plans to address these issues, and I, I hope to be part of a Senate Democratic majority that can work on these. Without getting into the nitty gritty of it, can you talk about how some of these things are paid for? We and we yeah. heard about them paying for themselves on the back end. You know, once they lead to higher paying jobs and things like that. But talk yeah. about the, the front end cost of it and how you address paying for them. Sure, that's a. I, I'm glad you asked that because uh, I've also put together that piece of the the plan and. It primarily involves closing a lot of special interest tax breaks in our tax code. And right now we have a tax code that is tilted in favor of people who make money off of money and against people who make money off of hard work. Clearest example are hedge fund managers on Wall Street or elsewhere. Pay a lower tax rate than students uh, at you know, schools in Salisbury, uh, excuse me, teachers at schools in Salisbury. Um, but there are lots of other examples, and if you actually add up all the tax breaks in the tax code, 17 percent of the benefits, and we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars, go to the top 1 percent. And so my proposal essentially eliminates those big tax break windfalls for the very wealthy uh, and uses those resources two ways. One is to invest more in students and in our future. And also I use some of that to reduce our long-term deficit so that we're not having to you know, cut Medicare or Social Security because we want to protect those programs. So that is the sort of framework that I've laid out. There are other things we can do um, uh, to save money uh, in Medicare, for example, without hurting beneficiaries, like giving the government the right to negotiate drug prices. It's crazy we haven't done that. Yet saves money for seniors, saves money for the Medicare program, helps reduce the deficit. So a lot of things that we can do, and I've put them forward in, in part of that plan. Since you mentioned Medicare, and this will be yeah. my last question, I do want to ask you about your Social Security plan um, and how that differs a bit from your opponent. I know that's been uh, in the news a lot lately. So right. So um, the the difference is this: um, I've been leading the fight uh, as the senior Democrat on the Budget Committee to protect. Uh, Social Security and Medicare. In fact, I was elected by my colleagues and asked by Leader Pelosi, former Speaker Pelosi, to do that. Um, and my opponent actually was one of the people who supported me and said that I should be at the table. And I've been leading those fights. Uh, in this campaign, my opponent has unfortunately not been leveling with the people of Maryland, uh, not been telling the truth on this issue. Uh, the reality is that uh, I put forward the proposals to block the Tea Party cuts on Social Security and Medicare as recently as two weeks ago, uh, once again. Uh, I have a 100% rating from the Alliance for Retired Americans. Uh, the head of the Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, which is the major organization focused on this, um, it was a strong term, but he called me the, the savior at the negotiating table uh, for Social Security and Medicare. So it really is unfortunate uh, that now that we're in a campaign, uh, the person who actually endorsed me as one of the leaders in that fight uh, is now playing politics. So the only difference is I've been at the table fighting to protect these issues. 
Um, I've always thought it was more important to be you know, a leader in the effort rather than simply a vote uh, and a voice in this effort. And so uh, I'm glad you asked that. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.